first, let me say that it is wrong for a minister responsible for finance to say that he has successfully turned the corner. That can never be the case. In fact, according to Adongo, he's not even close to the corner. What he has successfully done, indeed, is that he has deepened the woes of the ordinary Ghanaian. I say this for a simple reason. Because of certain factors that the statement has outlined. <coughs> First, he has revised economic growth from 2.8% of GDP to 1.5% of GDP. This clearly shows that the economy is contracting and it is declining and obviously is going to affect jobs and the welfare of the ordinary Ghanaian. Remember that in the year 2022, the overall GDP growth was 2.2%. He announced it was 3.1%. He announced in the 2023 budget in November, when he appeared before us, that the economy is expected to grow at 2.8%. I had indicated to him that with all what is happening in the economy, there is no way Ghana's economy can grow at 2.8%. Today, and finally, the chicken has come home to be roasted. He has informed us that the economy is going down and down, and to the extent that GDP growth is going to be 1.5% by the end of the year 2023. Even this, I have my doubt. Because looking at all what is happening, if care is not taken, we will struggle to see economic growth at above 1%. As if that is not enough, our minister today informed us and again, in the 2022, 2023 budget that was read in November, he indicated that he's not going to borrow from the domestic market at all. Zero financing from the domestic market. Sadly, today he has informed us that he has gone ahead without parliamentary approval and have borrowed from the T-bill market an amount of 5.5 billion Ghana cities. And as if that is not enough, He's going to borrow another 41.3 billion before the year ends. So, colleagues, no wonder inflation is still going up and rising. No wonder that the central bank is busily increasing monetary policy rate. No wonder that lending rate is still going up. I wouldn't be surprised that at the end of the year, inflation will not make any headway. This is a gangantuan missed opportunity. Ghana had the opportunity to reduce lending rate downwards under 15%. Unfortunately, due to the activities of government, particularly the overborrowings and overexpenditure from government, Ghana's lending rate and market rates are still going up. TB rate not long ago was about 14%. Today we are doing about 23, 24, 25. We may end up in the 30s before the year ends. The third one has to do with the fact that he's saying that the city has stabilized. Our brothers and sisters from the media, the Ghana city has stabilized relatively because we have defaulted in the payment of our external debt. If you were to look into the budget, by this time we should have serviced our debt, external debt, approximately 11 billion Ghana cities. Because we have defaulted in servicing our debt owned to Eurobond lenders, China, Saudi Arabia, India, UK, Japan, France, Czech Republic, and many more countries. I don't know of Togo, but it could be that we owe them. <laughs> but because we owe all these countries and because we have failed to service this debt, we have made some savings 
that is supporting our balance of payment. It is not because he has turned the corner. By the end of the year, as early as January 2024, we will start servicing this debt. And if we are to start servicing this debt, don't be surprised that our currency, the city, will start depreciating once again. So it is not true that they have turned the corner. They have rather deepened our woes. This is just the foundation. My colleague and the ranking member, Honorable Adongo, will speak and then make some comment as the ranking member of the Finance Committee of Ghana's Parliament. And tomorrow, we urge the people of Ghana and all of you to pay attention to what we will say starting the debate on the media review. I think we've missed a golden opportunity to turn around our economy. We are rather messed you up as the people of Ghana. And this has been superintended by Mr. Strat. We all listen to the funeral dead. At some point, I had to wake up and ask them to wake up from sleep and listen to the man. So when they finally got up and said, yeah, yeah, they were sleeping. So I was surprised when they suddenly woke up, they were shouting when they hadn't heard the man speaking. But like my leader said, the finance minister says he has turned the corner. You have turned the corner when inflation is 42%? Is that the corner? You have turned the corner when you are reporting that even by the end of the year, your reserves will only be 0 0.8 months. That is less than one month of reserves at the Bank of Ghana. And you said that is turning the corner. You have turned the corner when the governor and the MPC just recently increased monetary policy rate to 30%. You have turned the corner when the Bank of Ghana has reported that the city has depreciated by 30%. So quite clearly, he is not even near the corner, let alone to turn it. You have turned the corner when your central bank, the Bank of Ghana, has actually recorded negative reserves at the Bank of Ghana to the tune of 70 billion Ghana cities. That is the total borrowing. But our reserve position at the Bank of Ghana today is negative 70 billion. What it means is that all the monies in our banks that they force them to save with the Bank of Ghana that we call prudential reserves, Sikanashi, Bank of Ghana has wasted all that money. All the monies they've been borrowing from abroad in foreign currency to support the city is gone. As a matter of fact, if you even take away government debt that they have impaired of 48 billion, you will see, see that the Bank of Ghana has a whole of 22 billion. So it is not government. And you come here and say you have turned the corner. What this means is that the Bank of Ghana itself, as we speak, is not fit for purpose. Because Bank of Ghana, as we speak today, cannot undertake monetary policy without printing money, because it doesn't have money. And yet you say you have turned the corner. Tomorrow we will tell him whether he's even on site. <laughs> but today this is just on the surface. But you know they released the Bank of Ghana auditor report on Friday, hoping that Saturday, Sunday we'll be attending funerals and churches. And then Monday, Ken Oforiata will take our attention away. Tell the governor, after tomorrow we are back to the Bank of Ghana audit report. Thank you very much.